What's up? I'm travel photographer Brendan Vanson of brendansadventures.com and this is an episode of Behind the Lens featuring Antelope Canyon. We'll be discussing the difference between editorial and commercial photography. So I decided to start a new uh, playlist here on this YouTube photography channel that's got more of a video diary format to it because I realized you just can't film everything that you want out in the field. Sometimes you just need to be in your own space in a little private area in a hotel or a hostel or an Airbnb apartment as I am right now um, to discuss things um, that I can't do out in the field or maybe just like go on a bit of a rant or talk about something that's happening in the photography world or talk about how terrible a shoot went or my future travel plans or anything like that. So it's a little bit of a new format. It's going to be a little bit of me standing in front of the camera um, discussing what life is like behind the lens if you will. So I hope you like the format. I'd love to hear your thoughts about it in the comments. Um, on this episode, we're going to be talking about Antelope Canyon, but not the canyon itself, not directly. Instead, we're going to be talking about editorial versus commercial photography and the blurring lines that are happening right now because of social media and things like YouTube and other things like that. So Antelope Canyon's a great place to discuss this because they do have a requirement on photographers to get a commercial permit if they want to be shooting commercial images. So let's get into it. Let's talk first about the process of getting a permit to Antelope Canyon, which I think is actually a really good process. You need to give them about two to three weeks notice and you fill out this online form. It costs you $50 to get a commercial permit if you want one. And for example, if, let's say you don't know if you want one. Let's say you, you're not sure you're going to be able to get anything that's commercial worthy or that you'll be able to sell. You can always go into the canyon without a permit, shoot images to your heart's content. And then if you get some stuff that's absolutely fantastic that you want to sell later for commercial purposes, you can pay later. The only issue is you need to pay $200. So the price boosts big time if you decide later on that you want to use your images for commercial purposes. So I think it's a really good setup they have. I think it's very reasonable. There's no difference whether you're a Hollywood producer or a you know, freelance photographer, it's 50 bucks flat. And the process is quite simple. So I appreciate that they have a process like that. That's quite easy over there at Antelope Canyon. And I'm sure a lot of photographers take advantage of it. So as this video motors along, I'm going to be showing some photos that I took in Antelope Canyon. So you don't have to get stuck with my ugly mug the entire time. But as I'm showing some images, I'm going to discuss some things um, regarding commercial and editorial photography and that blurring line that I mentioned. So let's start by talking about commercial photography and what that is exactly. Commercial photography is very black and white in my opinion. Um, commercial photography is any sort of imagery that is selling a product or service. Uh, and for example, if I was to give you an example, if I was in Antelope Canyon and I was producing a photo for let's say Southwest Airlines and Southwest Airlines was going to use that photo in magazines and newspapers and it said you know Southwest Airlines fly to Antelope Canyon or something like that, that's commercial. If I'm inside Antelope Canyon and I have a Nokia 1520 and I'm, you know, a model and I'm checking my email and somebody's taking the photo and I use this image um, to sell Nokia phones in a magazine or news or whatever, that is commercial photography. So it is pretty black and white commercial photography itself. Um, editorial, on the other hand, is any type of imagery that's used for news related activities is considered editorial rather than commercial. So for example, if The Guardian hired me out to shoot 20 images for them for a news story that they were writing about Antelope Canyon or something like that, then that's editorial. It's not commercial, it's not selling anything directly, so that's editorial photography and I wouldn't need a permit for that. Um, there obviously is people that question the blurring between editorial and commercial 
In newspapers, especially in travel, when it can be fairly direct, for example, they might have a story on Antelope Canyon, and then the very last page will be a separate advertorial image of Antelope Canyon uh, that's trying to sell tours or flights or anything like that. And there is a distinction. The first five page would, pages would be editorial, and the last one would be commercial. <laughs> so there is a blurring. There's definitely a blurring, and people can always say, you know, those images, those editorial images are being used to sell newspapers. So there is definitely a commercial aspect, but it's indirect. So when you're talking about the difference between commercial photography and editorial photography, the biggest difference is how direct or indirect it is. If it's direct, 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 like here's an image of a phone by this phone, that's commercial. Um, if it's indirect, then it's, it's editorial altogether. Now, Another interesting question is, where does art fit into all of this? You probably have heard, if you're into photography in the news recently, Peter Lick is claiming to have sold one of his photos from Antelope Canyon for six and a half million dollars or something ridiculous like that. Now, I'm not gonna get into it. I think that's fantastic for Peter Lick to sell an image at that rate if that's true. I think that's brilliant, all the power to him. If that boosts the price of other art photography in the world, I'm happy for it. If you're the person that bought that image, you have too much money and you should give some of it to me because that's a waste of an image, or money, I mean. But anyway, that's another <laughs> argument for another day. I'm not sure any fine art photo is worth six and a half million dollars. But getting back to the debate about art, is where does art fit in the spectrum of editorial commercial? Or is it somewhere completely different? In my opinion, it's right in the middle, editorial commercial. Um, because with art, if you take a photo in Antelope Canyon and you sell that as prints, you're directly using that photo for commercial pr uh, purposes, that commercial purpose being selling the photo, selling the images. And so I think that's really interesting. On the other hand, what's the difference between a photo and a painting? If I was to paint Antelope Canyon and sell that painting, do I need a commercial permit to do that? So what is the difference between taking a photo and a, and a painting? I don't think there's anything different. And in my personal opinion, I believe art to be completely separate than editorial or commercial. And in the case of Antelope Canyon, I don't know. I'd never asked them because I don't sell prints, so I'm not really sure the case. I don't know if Peter, uh, Peter Lick uh, paid the $50 fee to do commercial photography in there or if he just took the image and left and decided that art is not commercial, um, which is probably where I fit more. If I was selling a print from Antelope Canyon, I don't think that I would need a commercial permit because I'm not selling anything else other than the exact photo itself. I'm not selling, you know, a Nokia phone. I'm not selling uh, flights to anywhere. I'm just selling the art. So um, that's my opinion on that little bit of debate. Where does art fit in? So let's talk about the blurring lines as I'm starting to lose my voice from this monologue. It's starting to fade. And I swear if you're ears are starting to get bored with my voice, it's coming to a close. But I really, really wanna talk about this blurring of lines between editorial and commercial um, that's happened now because of social media. And as you know, social media is big money. It's huge money. YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, these companies make massive, massive amounts of money, as well as the people that are on those platforms are making money. Um, I'm gonna use the example of Instagrammers because I think they're the perfect uh, example. And remember, you can follow me on Instagram, at Brendan Vanson. Shout out to myself right there. <laughs> um, Instagrammers blur the lines, definitely. Especially the ones with massive followings because in many cases they're shooting for tourism boards or they're uh, you know, shooting on a certain camera that's been supplied for them by somebody as long as they tell them, hey, I'm shooting a Canon um, camera. So there is that blurring of, of commercial versus um, editorial and personal use when it comes to Instagram. If I'm a big time Instagrammer and let's say Nokia has hired me and Nokia says, Brendan, we're gonna give you a Nokia 1520, but we want you to go to Antelope Canyon 
And in Antelope Canyon, take a couple photos, post them to your Instagram. We're gonna give you $200 an image to post to Instagram, as long as you say in the caption, shot in Antelope Canyon using my Nokia 1520. That's commercial. That is blatantly commercial. Like, there's no doubt about it. And I'm very sure that the vast majority of Instagrammers are breaking the law in so many manners in the United States because the National Park Service is claiming that any images taken inside the National Park for commercial use require a permit the exact same way Antelope Canyon is. So how many images have we seen on Instagram of Arches National Park or Antelope Canyon or anywhere in the United States um, by Instagrammers that are getting kickbacks or, or money? So that's where the blurring happens. There's also a blurring, as I'm gonna stop doing this right now because it's weird. One more time. There is also a blurring when it comes to YouTube, for example. At the start of this video, there was an ad. And um, this video isn't selling anything directly, but you've come to this video to see photos of Antelope Canyon or hear this discussion or see my pretty face or anything like that. So in many ways, there's a commercial aspect to this video. I see it more as an editorial newspaper side of things. For example, I mentioned that article in The Guardian before. When you have five pages that are editorial and one commercial, that's what this YouTube video is. You've got the entire video that is, is editorial, and then you've got the little ad at the start that's commercial. I don't see YouTube videos as being commercial unless they're selling something directly, and that's how I'm always gonna see it. For me, this is editorial the same way a newspaper is editorial, and that's my thought. So I think it's an interesting discussion that's only gonna heat up in the coming months, years, um, as people taking selfies and doing stupid things in National Park to draw attention to themselves becomes more and more um, popular, and I really hope it doesn't. You know, traveling through the US on this road trip, we've seen so many stupid things. I mean, we've seen you know people climbing on arches. We've seen people like riding on arches. We've seen people, uh, you know, just doing stupid things in national parks, going way off the trail. And I've discussed it to a couple people, and everybody goes, "Oh yeah, those foreign tourists. It's the Asian tourists. It's not been. When I've seen it happen, it's nine times out of ten, nine and a half times out of ten, it's eighteen to thirty-year-old Americans that are doing it, taking selfies." and using selfie sticks and all this sort of stuff to take stupid photos that they think is funny and being completely disrespectful to nature. But that's another battle for another day. It's another discussion for another day. And again, with this blurring of commercial and editorial happening, I'm interested to see how many people are fined, prosecuted, um, and taken down for doing things like posting a selfie to Instagram or posting a, uh, uh, you know, an image to, to Facebook or a video to YouTube or something like that. Now, I want to give a shout out to Outside. They're pretty much the guy that, the people that got this uh, ball rolling inside my head. I read an article on Outside online and I'll link to that article below in the information um, section of this video that discusses the national park system and what constitutes commercial activity in the eyes of national park services in the United States. And let me tell you, it's strict. It's to the point that pretty much everybody I know is breaking the law in some sort in the national parks by posting videos to YouTube, by taking selfies anywhere, because the law says um, commercial use is any sort of use of a model. So holding a stick up and taking a photo of yourself, you're the model in the national parks eyes. Anybody could really be taken down for this commercial use. So I'm interested to see how this is gonna go. Uh, again, I'm shouting out outside online because that was a fantastic um, article and really well written, really, really well researched and you should definitely check that out. Um, personally, I'm done discussing editorial versus commercial, hopefully, forever. I hope I never have to discuss it ever again because my voice is lost. Um, but if you want to discuss it amongst each other or with me, the comment section below is open to that and I'm completely all ears to talking about this, this discussion because I really do think it's quite interesting and a really gray area. There's a very strong gray area to this um, discussion as well. Anyways, 
As you can probably tell by my beard and nasty long hair, we've been traveling hard. We've been traveling really hard, like intensely hard, like I haven't showered in a month hard. And it's been amazing here in the United States. It's been really cool. And we still got a lot of really cool places to come. We've still got, um, we've still got a bunch of places, San Francisco, uh, maybe even Death Valley, Sequoia, some really cool places before heading out of the country to South America. I also want to tell you that my second workshop, which will be taking place in Bolivia and Peru, is now booking. So if you want to learn to be a travel photographer uh, or you're a hobbyist and you want an opportunity to take photos on vacation without the rest of the group bothering you to get moving, this is a fantastic opportunity for you. Come with me to Peru and Bolivia. The information is somewhere around me right now for you to click on and check out. So I hope to see you in Peru and Bolivia. I hope you say subscribe to the channel. We got some cool stuff still coming up and I'll catch you next time if my voice ever comes back.